2000, we bought an abandoned 100-acre farm in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. We spent years cleaning it up, built a new house, and now are trying to make it a functional homestead farm. Welcome to Red Tool House. Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. Guess what? It is still raining. It is the monsoon season, evidently. Um, I've had several of you ask about updates on our pigs, uh, where we are because we, you know, we um, went into breeding, uh, did the artificial insemination. If you want to see videos about that, check it out up here. But um, in the previous videos, we talked about how so, uh, two of them didn't take. And uh, so where are we right now? So as you can see, I've got five hogs right now. This one, this first one, this is uh, Matilda. The boys named them, so I have to keep them straight. This is Matilda. She is uh, a yearling. Uh, in fact, she's just, she's actually one year old this week, I believe. So she's one year old. I did not breed her. She was going to, um, you know, come into next time's rotation. And then we have her mother, Mercy, here, who she uh, didn't take last time. Uh, her breeding didn't take. And then behind her is Merida, who she did take. So her breeding's in. And then Abigail, who's the grandma, she, um, she didn't take, so she's done. She's ready to be retired. She's going to need to go to freezer camp at some point. And then we have uh, Hoss over here, who's a little impatient. Um, Hoss is a gilt, which, uh, as many of you already know, a gilt just means a female pig that has never had a litter. So she's a gilt. And she was always slated for freezer camp because I could never get her heat cycle to show up. And what was crazy, uh, this year when I was using boar spray more, using some of those uh, hormones more to, uh, pheromones, whatever they are, uh, to, to stir up the heat cycle more, she actually responded. And she responded well. So she, uh, as a gilt, of course, isn't, isn't showing as much sign, but I'm pretty certain I haven't seen any heat cycle with her again. Um, so she should be, she should have uh, settled, so she should be uh, ready to have a litter. So what are we looking at here? So not bread and not bread, 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 bread. Now Merida, she was bred back in December, I believe, if I have to go back and look at my calendar. So we got her bred in December, so she's actually scheduled to farrow um, this time in, or sometime in March, and, and again I've got all this written down. I'll uh, display the date right here. Uh, scheduled to, to farrow in March, so we're, we're about a, you know, less than a month out on having piglets there. We're, the, we're in the last week of February right now. So she'll be the first to go. And then if uh, Mercy and uh, Hoss maintain their breeding, then they'll be ready to go about mid-May. So what that does, this is the first time that I've had a a, uh, we'll have split litters on the homestead. Usually uh, when I breed them, everybody breeds about the same time and they farrow within a week of one another so I can just put everybody together, all the piglets together, and they're, they're fine. So in this situation, we're actually going to have her piglets that are going to be about eight weeks older than the other two. So, um, you know, that's just one thing we'll have to look at as far as how we manage that, how we manage the feeders. Do I uh, after they've weaned, do I keep the, the younger ones separate as a transition from weaning to feed? It'll just be some additional um, concerns I have there. But we're excited. Now, <clears throat> you may be wondering, okay, how many piglets are we talking about here? Well, again, that's the $20,000 question. Nobody knows. But um, Mercy has done a great job. She's a great sow. And that's why I kept her daughter, because she usually has about 15 to 18 piglets in a litter. Now those aren't all viable. Sometimes she's had uh, she's she's had as many as 18 actually hit the ground, um, and some of them be stillborn. And of course we've had you know, one or two crushing that situation, but she's had strong strong litters. Really like really like her as a as a good producer. So um, you know I'm I'm estimating maybe 13. Hopefully I'd like to see at least 13 viable from her. And Merida, who's actually the daughter of Abigail back here. Uh, Merida, she has had, she usually has right at 13. In fact, I think the last two times she's had exactly 13. And um, with hers, I think she's only had one stillborn out of those. So she has a smaller number in her litter, usually, but has good quality pigs. They, uh, they seem to grow pretty fast. She's got more of that Hampshire in her. 
so she seems to, uh, to have some pretty strong pigs when they're born. Now again, with, uh, with Hoss here, I got no clue. I have no idea what we're going to get from her. But she is the daughter of Merida, who is the daughter of Abigail. So you can see this is grandma, mom, and, and granddaughter here. So I'm hoping if she took, which, uh, which I think she has, then I'm hoping that we'll get a litter similar to, to Merida. So hopefully we're going to have you know, maybe 13 hit the ground. So in that situation, if I get 13 here, and let's say maybe 10 viable from each of those, that's obviously 33 piglets. That's a lot more than I would want to have on the homestead at any time. And this is the kind of thing you see, those of, those of you that also raise pigs, you may kind of be grumbling, saying, oh, here we go, somebody else flooding the market with pigs. Well, what would actually do in this situation, ideally I'd like to have 20 to 24 to finish out. So if I end up with 33, we've talked in the past about how I'm working with a, a, um, a non-profit, a faith-based addiction recovery program that they're looking to do a, their own sustainable agricultural um, element. So what I will do is anything above uh, my ideal number, I will donate to that organization. And uh, so that'll be an opportunity to A, to get them going so they won't have those upfront costs. Uh, we know that all the pork that they produce is going to be processed and be used for consumption within their program. Um, so it'll be, it'll be a great opportunity there, uh, hopefully, if we're blessed and have a, have a good sized litter, then we'll have an opportunity to, uh, to bless that organization with some pork that they can raise on their property and, and obviously turn that into nutrient dense food for the men and women that are going through their addiction recovery program. And we'll document some of that. We're, um, we've already ordered chickens for that organization. Uh, we've made an announcement about that a while back. I'll post a link here to that announcement. Um, but we've ordered chickens. They're going to raise, um, in this first go-around, they're going to raise about 300 broilers uh, for that same purpose, again, to produce food. And with the chickens, they're also going to produce a little bit of, of revenue so they can support these programs. Um, so as we, as we raise these chickens, be able to sell the meat um, to, to consumers to be able to help pay for some of the addiction recovery programs. So it's pretty cool. It's really neat to, to see that. So, so that's my plan. Uh, again, those of you that asked for an update, three pigs pregnant, hopefully. Hopefully we get nice strong litters in March and May. So we'll obviously document that as we go along. Yeah, uh, when the farrowing time comes next month, we'll, we'll definitely get, uh, get in here and, and shoot all that so, uh, so everybody can see what's going on there. Well, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash red toolhouse. And don't forget to sign up for our e-newsletter. Well, we're trying to send an e-newsletter out on a regular basis to update people what's going on, uh, kind of talk about some of the things, link to some of the stuff that's going on over on the blog. Um, just just kind of keep you up to date on what's happening here on the homestead. Well, take care, everybody.